Hello friends, Eli here with Mystic Circuits. Today I'm very excited to have the Zero HP Envelope build tutorial ready for you. Um, it's been a little bit since I released this and I now finally have kits built for it. So let's get started, shall we? Also you might hear some noises in the background. I am currently stuck in quarantine with my roommates, so uh, there might be some shuffling about in the back. Try and uh, ignore it if you can. Let's take all the stuff out. I'm gonna dump out my baggie. Alright, so put the bag away. We're gonna take this silver bag with all the silicon components and put that over there. We'll put the faceplate and the jacks to the side for now. And there should also be these four little standoff parts. We can put that to the side as well. So now we should have some resistors, a capacitor, and our circuit board. So now, there should be one resistor that is a different, sorry, the auto focusing on my camera is a little silly sometimes. So there is one resistor right here labeled 4.7K and all of the other resistors are labeled 1K. By the way, if you are new to soldering, um, I would say this is sort of like a medium difficulty project, but if you're new to soldering, we have a video on the basics of soldering, sort of with tips and trips, tri trips, t <sighs> tips and tricks. How hard was that to say? I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the description of the video. If you're at all, you know, unsure about it or just want a little touch up, uh, that should be a good place to start. So. 4.7k res resistor is right there. You see the little circle with the line and the two connecting the two dots. That means that the resistor goes in the holes linking the two dots together and then there's 1k, 1k, 1k. You'll notice here we have two groups of resistors. One of them is labeled 4.7k. The other comes in a bag of a package, a sort of group of three that is unlabeled. These are our 1Ks, so we're gonna leave that alone. We're gonna take our 4K, we're gonna put that one in first. So take the tape and the, uh, the paper off. You should just be able to slide it off. And then we're gonna take our resistor, kind of bend it over on itself like a little U shape. So you can see here, keep the legs as straight as possible. The, uh, it never wants to focus on it, so I'm gonna do this. The resistor is bent over, the body is on one side, and now what we can do is we can take that and put it in this position right here. Alright, and then underneath we just bend the legs away from each other. and. If you've watched one of my other videos, you might know, I like to bend the legs in such a direction where it's not going to directly be in contact with another pad, because it makes it a lot easier to not accidentally solder something if we do that. So let's just go ahead and solder this first resistor in. If our iron's been sitting alone for a while, we're going to turn the heat back up, and then we're going to tin the iron. And what that does is it sort of wakes up the solder, makes it nice and flowy and shiny. And that makes soldering so much easier. I can't tell you what it's like to solder without a tinned iron. So, all right, what we do is we kind of pick the joint that we want to solder, and then we go ahead and stick our iron next to it. And you can kind of hold the circuit board still with the iron with just a little bit of pressure, and then you just touch the solder to it. And the solder should flow really nicely into the little joint right there. I do the same thing with this leg. There you go. Now, focus please, there we go. All right, so we're gonna bend our legs up and how you can tell it's a good connection is if you wiggle the leg and this little solder blob doesn't move around, you can tell that the solder has made a good connection. And at this point, we can use our wire cutters and cut these legs off. Like that. So hopefully, Whee! 
hopefully this is what your kit looks like so far. And now we're going to do the same thing, but with the 1K resistors. So take your resistors, pull the paper tabs off, and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to, here, it's a little, I'm going to zoom in a tiny bit. It's much easier to see this way. All right, so we're going to take the resistor, fold it over. like that and then we're going to put it in the rest of the half of these videos is just a fight to keep everything in focus so I'm going to put it in the rest of the little resistor positions bend the legs out so that they're not touching any of the other pads Fold the resistor over. It's looking a little wonky, but it'll still work. We'll put it in the resistor position. Uh, this one's going to be tricky, so I'm going to kind of fold it in like this, and then fold it in like that, and I'll show you how we keep it keep it safe afterwards. Fold the resistor over, and then place it in the hole. So now your kit should look like this, right? Hopefully that's what you also see. Feel free to pause it and just make sure that everything's looking good right now. If so, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and solder this stuff in. All right. Iron's been sitting dry, so we're just going to tin it again. Now. I'm going to do the easy resistors first, so we're going to do this guy, same as before, put your iron sideways against the joint, just touch the solder to the joint, sideways against the joint, touch the solder to the joint. Now for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this leg first because there's nothing really in the way of it. Right, there's no, not a lot of risk of it getting solder somewhere accidentally. And then I'm going to just bend this leg up. And that makes it a little easier to, to prevent an accidental solder bridge. Alright, so again. This is what you should see. Alright, we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to pick up these legs, make sure none of the joints move around. If you do have a joint moving around, just go ahead, hit it with the soldering iron again. Maybe add a little bit of solder just to redo the joint. Everything looks good, so we're going to cut off the legs. So, should have something looking more or less like this. I try and like kind of show it in the glare too because it makes it actually a little bit easier to tell what's going on. The lighting in this room is unfortunately not that great. Um, okay, so now this is what we've got. You might think that it makes sense to solder the capacitor in, but I actually like to do it last just because it's so tall it makes soldering the other parts a little bit more difficult. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and grab the silver bag. We're going to take the tape off. And we're going to dump out all the parts. There should be three parts in here, I believe. Yeah, two diodes and one little, what's called an optocoupler chip. It's a cute little chip, isn't it? All right, so Put the optocoupler and the capacitor to the side for a moment. We're just going to focus on these diodes. Now, both diodes are the same, but um, I'm going to tell you something once. Right, I'll tell it to you a couple times because 
It's your module will not work if you put the diodes in the wrong way. Now you'll notice one side is red and one side is white on the tape. It's possible your tape might have fallen off, but the point is still there. On the red side, there's a little silver ring on that black cylinder. You should be able to see that pretty clearly on the camera right now. That silver ring is called the cathode. And the cathode with the silver ring on the cylinder, the body of the diode, has to match up with the white line on the diode footprint. You can see there's also like a little arrow going in the direction of the white line. That's how a capacitor is normally noted in a schematic. And the arrow is going towards the, capa the cathode, excuse me. A diode in a schematic, arrow is going towards the cathode with the white line. The white line matches the red side of the diode, the silver ring. One more time. Silver ring matches the white line, which is the cathode. If you do this wrong, your module will not work. So if you want to be absolutely sure you've done this right, I'm so sorry, it's really hard to keep this all in focus. Silver ring, white line, right there, right? I'm gonna bend these legs out, I'm gonna bend it again in a, such a way that it doesn't touch any of the other pads, at least towards the bottom. I'm gonna bend the legs down. You can see our silver ring is again to the left. And this one towards the top is actually going in the other direction. So I do it like that. Right? Now bend these legs maybe like that. That should be good. Alright, that's how the legs are. That is how the silver rings and the diodes look. Again, if you are at all unsure that you've done this correctly, pause the video now, make sure everything looks the way that it does on the screen. The silver ring on the bottom is going towards the left. The silver ring on the right, on the top, is going towards the right. If you do this wrong, your module will not work. So please, before you solder anything in, absolutely make sure that this is what things look like. All right? Okay, now that you are 1,000% certain that you've done that correctly, we're going to go ahead and solder that stuff. Iron's been left alone for a little bit, so we tin it. If you're ever, like, soldering something and you go, why isn't the solder flowing? It's because you didn't tip the iron. So, I do it every time I'm about to solder something. It just makes my life so much easier. Put the iron on flat against the joint and touch the solder to it. Iron flat against the joint, touch the solder to it. Iron flat against the joint, touch the solder to it. Touch it. You gotta touch it. That's what you gotta do. Iron flat against the joint, touch the solder to it. All right, and as usual, we bend the legs up, make sure that the dots don't move too much, or rather, at all. You don't want them moving at all. Yeah, I, I feel like if you look, wow, it actually did, there you go. See how that's like a little little blob of solder kind of sitting on the top and you can even see the pad on the right. I'm just going to go ahead and touch the iron to that one, make sure it flows nice and even. You can see now that blob of solder is more like level and stuck onto the pad. It's hard to do a bad joint on purpose, so um, it's hard maybe to explain it, but if everything's looking good, go ahead and use your wire cutters to um, cut the legs. Um, 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 um. Great, legs are cut. 
very good. So this is what you should see. Now we are going to solder the optocoupler into this little box right here. I really like this part. It's such a cute little package and uh, I only wish it was bipolar. It only works with unipolar voltages, but it does the job well. Um, let's see, so it's going to be a little tough to tell, but hopefully this will focus a bit. Alright, so you can see in the glare from the light that there's a dot on the upper left hand corner of the chip. I really hope that this is coming through on your screen, but you can see that dot like right there. That indicates pin 1. And on our board, pin 1 is the side that has the, uh, the little curve in it. Right, so in this situation, if you're looking at the board in this direction, the chip pin one is going to line up like that. And I'll just go ahead and put it in and then hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So let's see. There we go. So you can see here the little dot on the chip matches the curve on the footprint, the silkscreen footprint of the board. Dot on the chip matches the curve. All right. Now the easiest way I have found to solder these is you put your finger on the top touching the plastic only you don't really want to touch the metal because when the soldering iron is touching the metal that usually gets hot you don't want to touch it then what you do is you take your solder right your spool of solder and you kind of bend it up into almost like a clothing hanger kind of shape I like to call it a snake a little solder snake right and it's sitting up there and the nice thing about that is it lets you have a little bit more of a hands-free kind of thing. I'll try and do this at an angle you're able to see it, but it's kind of this, I, I don't know, I never like learned this specifically from anybody, but it's made my life a lot easier. So I just call it the solder snake. We're gonna tin our iron again, all right? And then what you do is you put the snake, the end of the snake onto one of the corners, all right? Trying to do this with the light. Let's try the other corner. All right. Snake goes onto one of the corners. Oof, almost just burned my finger there. All right. Be careful about your finger, especially if you're looking at a camera while trying to do this. And then uh, what you do is you just kind of press your iron into the snake and you've got a corner. And you'll notice once the corner is in, your chip is not going to come out. So just make sure it's nice and flat, which it appears to be, and then you can solder the rest of the pins. Like you normally would. All right, this thing's almost done. Look at that. So now you'll notice that the capacitor is the only place left except for the jacks. And I personally feel like it's easier to solder the jacks in just because they're shorter than the capacitor. If you do the capacitor first, your board is going to be laying in a funny angle while you do it. So we're going to press the jacks in. What you want to do is have the actual place where the jack gets plugged into facing out of the board. And it should really only fit in in one direction. And you just kind of push against these, make sure they're nice and flat. And now we're going to solder these tabs. Now, if you have an iron that increases in heat, which I highly suggest, just turn the heat up a little bit. And you'll notice that these tabs are um, sort of like oblong shape, like a oval or a pill in one direction. And they're flat in the other direction. All right might not really show up on camera very well, but if you're looking in person, it should be pretty obvious. So what you want to do is you want to put your iron 
flat against the flat section of the tab and you push some solder into it. It's a lot easier to do than on the sort of skinny portion of the tab. All right, And you'll be able to tell that you have a good joint because it is the hole is completely filled with solder and the solder is kind of like gradually sloping into the board instead of sitting on top of it. So go ahead and do that. You'll see I'm, I'm skipping a couple of these tabs. I'm only doing the ones that all go in the same direction. And that's because the other tabs are used for normalization and those are unused in this design. So all you, you only have to solder these four and these four and you can leave these four alone. You don't have to do anything with them. So we're almost done. Got our, this is what you should see so far. I'll try and give you like a close up. This is more or less what you should see so far. And you'll notice that we have this one last hole left over and that it's, it's very difficult to see on camera. But if you look, I'm gonna use the leg of the capacitor. There's this uh, plus sign right here, this tiny plus sign, the white silk screen section of the plus sign. Now, unfortunately, the capacitor is marked in the opposite way. So it has the minus sign on the capacitor. Some capacitors have a specific direction that they need to be going in the circuit board. Um, and so uh, this is one of those. And you'll notice the minus sign has a leg that's shorter than the other side. Um, like I said, it's backwards, so by, you know, uh, by, by uh, el process of elimination, we can tell that the long side is the plus side and the short side is the minus side. If you don't know about electricity, it's all pluses and minuses. So I'm going to take the long leg of this capacitor and we're going to put it in the hole that has the plus sign, which is to the left on our board. I'll say this again a couple times because, I mean, your your module might work if you do this backwards, but your capacitor might eventually fail. So um, you're going to take the long leg of the capacitor, put it on the side that has the plus sign, which is to the left. Long leg to the left. And all of these references are with, you know, being able to read the module is how I orient the board when I'm saying to the left or right. So if you can read the module, the long leg of the capacitor is going towards the left. All right, if you're at all unsure, go ahead and watch that section again and just double check before we solder this in. Should be fine just kind of splaying the legs out open like that. And now you can see like why I did the jacks first. The, the board is gonna wiggle around a little bit. So it might be helpful to just put the iron in the position it's going to land in and make sure everything is nice and stable before you press the solder in. You can see it wiggling a little bit. It's, you know, you'll get the hang of it. All right, solder that. Gonna do the same thing with the legs, wiggle them around. They both seem fine. Chop off the legs with the uh, wire cutter. All right, now we're, we're totally done with the soldering. Very nice. Now the last step is to put on the, uh, oh my God. Quesadilla. The quesadilla, we gotta put the quesadilla. The module has to go onto the quesadilla. It's really good. And in order to do that, my camera needs to focus. Try this. Here, I've been doing it like this. It seems to like to focus on letters. So, this is the standoff, and you'll notice that each side is slightly different. The side on the left 
is kind of smooth. And the side on the right has a little ridge on its nubbin, right? So the smooth side, ridged side. The smooth side goes into the circuit board. Uh, I'm going to do that with all four legs. Right, we got that going on. And then we're going to take our faceplate. I like to have the uh, the faceplate be readable, so we, you know, set it up so it's re readable. Flip it 180 and put it down. And then take your module, make sure it's readable. And you kind of line up the four little posts. Now, this part you're going to have to stand up for. All right. And... Oh! oh. Be prepared because it requires some kind of like gorilla strength. All right, you put your thumb, each thumb on top of each jack, and then you lean into it and just press until it all four corners click. Now you want to try to distribute the pressure evenly because if you do one corner more than the other, it can possibly break the acrylic. Um, it doesn't happen too often, but it's worth keeping in mind. So yeah, look at that, it's all done. You just built yourself a zero HP envelope. Congratulations. Hope that was fun for y'all. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in this video, send me an email, send Carly an email, or um, you have know, a LaCroix. have a LaCroix. You can also Cheers. post on the, uh, on the Muff Wiggler DIY thread, which I will link in the description of this video. Hope y'all have a wonderful day and enjoy your zero HP envelope. Ooh. Envelope, yeah, yeah. Envelope. 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 envelope.